The Justice Center for Constitutional Freedom says an Alberta court has struck down public health orders from Dr. Dina Henshaw that violated charter freedoms during the pandemic. In the case of Ingram versus Alberta, it says the court essentially struck down the lockdown measures because they were issued by cabinet and not from the chief medical officer of health at the time, which was Dr. Dina Henshaw. Henshaw testified at her trial that politicians were the final decision-making authority and she merely provided advice and recommendations. Now to chat about this case in more detail is one of the lawyers who worked on the case, Leighton Gray, who joins us now from Cold Lake, Alberta. Leighton, with the health orders having been invalidated, what will that mean for the many who were charged during the pandemic, including Pastor James Coates and Pastor Tim Stevens, who both spent time in jail? The short answer is it renders all of those prosecutions a legal nullity, which means that those prosecutions cannot proceed. It, it's impossible for uh, a, an invalid law, uh, for a person to be prosecuted under an invalid law, uh, which is a very key, key aspect to this decision. The other part of that is what is that going to mean in terms of civil liability for people who, like Rebecca Ingram, lost their businesses, for people like Pastor James Coates and Timothy Stevens who were imprisoned uh, because, because of their, their protest of these lockdown orders? These are, these are very, very live uh, legal questions that I'm sure are being discussed uh, in caucus today. Uh, and, and certainly uh, myself and Jeff Rath are, are, had a ver some very long and deep discussions about this last night after we were reviewing the decision. So let me ask you then, will those who are charged move forward with a class action lawsuit and potentially sue the province? I think that's quite likely. Um, I, I think that uh, certainly uh, the legal liability is there. Going back to the beginning of the case, it's important for people to remember there are really two parts to it. On the Firstly, firstly, the most important argument that we made is the one that we won on. That is that the orders themselves were illegal. The constitutional argument was really a secondary argument. It got it got a lot more press and it was a lot more fascinating to people. But but actually, it's a secondary argument. In fact, you don't go to a constitutional argument uh, until after the first one is decided. In fact, about 80 pages of this 90-page decision that was released by uh, Madam Justice Romaine was unnecessary and, and is called by lawyers obiter dicta, which means it, it, it has no bearing on the decision, it has no precedential weight. The crux of, deci of the decision, which is correct in my view and law, <laughs> obviously, uh, is that uh, all of these orders were illegal. So will the Alberta government appeal this decision? How high will this go? What I can say is there was a CM case, a case called CM that was decided by uh, Justice Dunlop uh, last summer, and that was actually a case that was pressed by the Alberta Teachers Union, uh, and that was that they actually brought a constitutional challenge when Dr. Hinshaw made an order removing masks, if you can believe it, and uh, and it was there. Justice Dunlop formed the same conclusion as Justice Romaine. Um, the government did not appeal that decision, interestingly. So, uh, based upon that, I think it's unlikely that this decision will be will be appealed. So moving forward, do you feel that maybe Premier Daniel Smith will make some changes to protect Albertans' rights and freedoms? Well, I, I'm not close enough to the Premier to say for certain, but I have heard from some people <laughs> over the past you know, 12 hours who are, and um, the impression I'm getting is that this is all the talk uh, 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 in, in caucus right now. This certainly is uh, I wouldn't go as far as to say a mandate, but it, it would provide her with momentum uh, to make the sort of changes that she talked about when she ran for ran for the leader leadership of the party. She hasn't talked about it very much since she's become premier, but I think there are very important legislative changes that need to be made. The crux of this decision for people, and this is the takeaway that I would I would hope that your viewers would 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 have, is that. This is the first and only decision of its kind in Canada in which a court has said to a government, a pandemic government, if we can call it that, you know, the Kenny regime or Rose by any other name, it's the first time a court has said to a government, you know what, your powers have limits. And if you try to exceed the limits of the powers that you created through your own legislation, we're going to tell you that. 
Thanks so much for your time today, Leighton. That was lawyer Leighton Gray joining us from Cold Lake, Alberta. By the way, Bridge City News also reached out to the Office of Justice Minister Mickey Amory, and they sent us a statement which reads, The Court of King's Bench decision on Ingram versus Alberta was a very detailed decision, and we are reviewing it. As there's a 30-day appeal period, we will not be able to comment further.